guys? Today Under Lifestyle, we're going to talk about the risks and rewards that come with owning a high lift jack. I've seen a bunch of stories on the internet where people have actually died using this jack, and I know from witnessing, a lot of people get injured with this jack. So I wanted to compile a list of some different things that I think are worth considering whenever you go to use your high lift to just try and stay safe and keep yourself out of harm's way. I hopped in the Land Rover and I went and grabbed my buddy Franz so we could show you some different things in the field. We're going to be bouncing back and forth a little bit today between the shop and being outdoors because I think that some things are going to be a little bit more appropriately shown on a workbench and some things are definitely going to be better shown on the rocks. So I wanted to give it a good mix and give you guys really good demonstrations on when I think you should use what techniques. The first thing I want to talk about today when it comes to safety is making sure your jack works. And this seems so obvious, and it is. But you need to put this in neutral position, which is where it is right now, and you can pull both of these and you can see that both return springs work. If these climbing pins get wedged when you're in the middle of using the jack, you're going to have to use unsafe practices in order to free it up. And of course, that's not ideal. So just make sure that these bad boys work. Make sure they're clean of debris. Every once in a while, take an air nozzle, spray them out. Um, I keep them dry unless I'm about to use it. When I'm about to use the high lift jack in the field, I use WD-40 or some sort of lubricant. It doesn't really matter. This is kind of controversial. Some people say that you shouldn't use this on them, but I've been using it like this for many, many, many years. I've never had an issue. Also, keep one of these kits with you. It, you know, these aren't very expensive. I'll put a link to it in my Amazon, my Amazon uh, cart. And just having this with you, so if one of your springs breaks or one of these uh, climbing pins gets like really rusty and doesn't want to move anymore, you have the parts to fix it on hand and it's not a big deal. The second tip's the easiest one we're going to talk about all day. Put it in park and pull your parking brake. This next tip is really important and that is selecting where to jack up the vehicle. This Land Rover is not stuck, but I do want to show you a spot that we can jack it up from so we can make it a little easier to get over these rocks. So what we're going to try to do is find something kind of flat and try to connect this part of the jack onto somewhere on the Land Rover where it's not going to slide. We want it to tip over as we drive, but we don't want it to slide out from underneath. And I think I've got a perfect spot back here. So I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for this Land Rover to get over these rocks. And so I'm going to jack this up from this point here. I'm gonna put a boot, usually I put a Carhartt, but I just have boots in my Land Rover today. So I'm gonna put a boot on top to make sure that when it falls, it doesn't like scratch up the side of the rig or anything like that. And this is gonna be very simple. We're just gonna jack it straight up and down. I'm gonna keep your face out of this area here. Lots of people get hurt with these and this is one of the main ways they do it. Is this, this guy right here will come up and smash them in the jaw or in the side of the temple or whatever. So we're just gonna give this a couple pumps and then we're gonna drive forward. It's going to make it a lot easier for this Land Rover to get over these rocks. A modern 4x4 has a whole lot of down travel, and this becomes a problem if you want to change a tire. So you don't want to take the high lift and jack this thing to the moon just so you can get the tire to come off the ground. The easy and the most common way that I see to solve this problem is either a ratchet strap or you can use a chain. A chain is good, um, but a chain is heavy, a chain is rusty. Um, there's reasons that I don't like to carry chains. I like ratchet straps for this exact reason. You can take it, you can anchor one side of the chassis, go underneath the axle, come back up on the other side, anchor that to the chassis. Now you can anchor these two together, but that is not the safest way to do it. And they're not designed to uh, have a load, like a side load like that, like you would be developing if you hook these together. So it's definitely better to hook them both independently to the chassis, ratchet it so it's nice and tight. Then whenever you go to jack up the front tire, it just lifts right off the ground. You guys all have a perfect safety tool for this and you don't even know it. And that is a bolt. So once you get this up to your desired height, you can take an extra bolt. I throw in a couple extra ones in my recovery bag and you just take it and set it through one of these holes and this will make it to where if you need to get underneath the rig, which I don't advise, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you need to get underneath the rig, this is a little bit of extra safety measure to make sure that this doesn't come out and just slide down on you. So this is a very cheap way to ensure that this isn't gonna drop on you in this way. Also, if you do need to get underneath here, there's a couple other things I would recommend. One would be find a point of contact that this can't slide out. So because we're using the shackle in this way, it makes it to where it's gonna keep us from sliding side to side. So I know that if I need to jack this up to whatever my desired height is, I can feel a lot more comfortable about getting underneath the rig in an emergency, you know, to bend that tie rod back or whatever I need to do and I'm not nearly as worried that this thing is gonna slide or that it's gonna collapse on me. This is definitely a much safer way to use this. 
One other tip that's just gonna kind of fall into this category, if you pull this pin and pull this handle out of the way, it's a lot less likely someone's gonna walk by and knock it out as well. Most of us don't wheel alone. So since a lot of us bring buddies, a lot of our buddies also have high lifts. I think there's a number of instances where using more than one high lift would be beneficial and make things a little bit safer. So as you can see, we just kind of propped up the side of the rover. This will make it easy to reach the transfer case linkage or um, line up a bolt, whatever we got to do. Let's say the spring pops out because we flex too far. You know, we could put two high lifts on one side and we can try to get that spring back in there. But because we have two, it is definitely safer than one because now you have a backup for your high lift, basically. It's when you combine this with the other strategies we've talked about so far, you know, you throw a bolt in the bottom of each one of these um, and you just take some extra precautions, this can actually, this can maybe save your life one day. This one is a two-parter. One, if you need to use your spare tire, you need to have a key to get the tire off. Um, I didn't even realize that these lugs were set up this way because I didn't put these wheels and tires on this rig, but that's that's bad on me. I mean, I definitely should have a key for this. I was going to demonstrate that you can pull your spare tire off and there's places that you can wedge it in order to be an extra safety whenever you lift your rig off the ground. So that is something that I think is very valuable. I've done this a number of times in real life and it's a nice peace of mind to know that it's gonna keep it that much farther off the ground and just give you an extra barrier between life and death. If you've got the room, it is nice to have a couple extra blocks for safety and even a small jack stand. In my Jeep, I do not have the room. I've never had the room. Those do not have much room in them to carry extra things like this. But on this Land Rover, there's tons of room back there. So I like to carry anything I can that'll make it to where I can take something that's out of level and put it in level just by stacking a couple blocks of wood. And if you wanna change that tire and it's being held up by that uh, strap we were talking about earlier, how nice would it be to be able to throw a jack stand underneath it? These aren't very big. They don't take up a whole lot of room. And if you pack it right, it shouldn't hinder the amount of space you have back there too much. For those of you who don't know, you can use a high lift as a come along. And it's a pretty sweet way to get yourself out of a bad situation. It's not super safe. This thing is really unstable. And if you get to a point where you need to reset and your vehicle is doesn't have a brake or whatever the situation is, you need to have a secondary strap. So if I'm using this and I'm winching it and I'm pulling my vehicle really slowly out of a mud hole or off of a cliff face, whatever, you wanna have a secondary strap hooked up to that vehicle in case this strap slips or your other strap like loosens up for whatever reason. And that way you don't just lose your vehicle on the side of a hill or cliff or whatever the situation is. It's just nice to have a backup plan for your backup plan, which is definitely what this is. I would recommend getting a winch if you don't already have one. And I would recommend inspecting your winch every time before you go wheeling, because this is honestly the last thing you wanna do. But it is an option that is there if you have to use it. The last tip in this video is by far the most important one, and I'm not at all trying to lecture you guys, but I see so many people not using their head when they are using tools like this, and they're dangerous. It's the same guy at the gun range that strafes his gun across a crowd of people instead of keeping it facing forward. And if we treat this tool like what it is, a really valuable tool that is also dangerous, no one will have problems getting hurt by this thing anymore. And we don't have to worry about people trying to take it away. But there are people that think that these shouldn't even be available, that they should be made illegal. I think that it's very important for us to take the responsibility ourselves when we're using tools like this, just, just like a pocket knife. I carry my pocket knife with me everywhere, and this is a tool that is such a good multifunction tool, whether you need to open up an Amazon box or you need to whittle something or whatever, whatever you wanna do, cut up some hamburgers and hot dogs, I, I don't know. But it's a multi-purpose tool that if used incorrectly can definitely kill you. So I don't want this to be a lecture at all. I just wanna stress that these tools are great. And I know that this comment section is gonna be full of people saying that you should never use this tool, it's never safe, all this other stuff, and you, are, you have that right to express your opinion. I'm not at all arguing that, but you're not right. This tool is a good tool if used properly and used cautiously. Just use your, use your best judgment. If you wouldn't want your kid to use the high lift jack in a certain way, that means you probably shouldn't either. And that goes for me too. Sometimes we will take risks ourselves that we shouldn't. And I think that this is a place where we shouldn't take those risks at all. So rant is over. I thank you so much for hanging in there till the end of the video. And if you wanna see more videos like this, 
give this one a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, if you want to support Dirt Lifestyle, you can go to our website, thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, and we have a Patreon account there as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.